Hi everyone, and welcome to my review for Tori. Tori is a third person puzzle and adventure game with an artistic approach and somber undertones. On release, the game came into some criticism for its painful walking mechanics which hampered exploration. I'm glad to say Tori has recently had a major update which has balanced the game out a lot more and now it is much more enjoyable. Death means different things to everyone and we all cope with it in contrasting ways. Ipa has just lost her sister Lulu and she is trying to confront the pain and guilt associated with it. Explore surreal landscapes in search of memories to save Lulu and solve puzzles to gain wings to ascend and unravel the torment inside of you. Tori is a third person puzzle and adventure game with an artistic approach and sombre undertones. I was quite heartened by the relaxing theme tune and attractive graphics of the title screen with the trees and grass blowing in the wind. I was looking forward to a nice relaxing adventure much akin to Journey or similar titles. I don't think Tori provides the same sort of chill factor but it does offer a nice alternative and is designed to represent the feelings of loss, frustration and guilt we might feel after losing a loved one. The de developer has tried to infuse these feelings into the gameplay, where travelling is arduous and difficult and needs perseverance and persistence. Before the update I felt this was too laborious and it certainly was frustrating, but I don't see why gameplay has to be unpleasant just to get across a feeling. This can be portrayed in other ways, through the writing or graphically. To address this, there are now two options to experience Tori, an arcade version and an immersive option. I love a bit of exploration and the visuals appealed to me with their minimalistic and artistic appearance and I was keen to explore all that the environments had to offer. The arcade version offers a much more relaxed experience and takes away the need to worry about getting lost or recovering your strength when running. But the immersive version needs Ipa to recuperate by sitting down and recovering her strength and there are no waypoints to direct you to the puzzles. I have played the new immersive version and it is much more forgiving than before and an acceptable hindrance if you want to experience the game as the developer intended. The running mechanics are much improved and there is less waiting around to recover but personally I still don't see the need to have any disabilities to exploring. It can be very easy to get lost and I found it difficult to work out what puzzles I had completed and what puzzles were left outstanding. If you want more of a challenge though, rather than a relaxed experience, go for the immersive option. If the recovery time is still too much, you can increase the amount of time she has run by solving certain puzzles, which prolongs her athletic ability, but this also increases the amount of time it takes for her to recover. The areas are quite vast and joined together by corridors, but once you enter another realm, I don't think it's possible to return, and if you have left the memories behind, you won't be able to recover them later. Once the game is completed, there is no chapter select or way of completing outstanding puzzles, so you must complete these as you go or end up missing out like I did. The soundtrack is chilled and relaxing, and there are some characters you can talk to briefly that provide a little lore and entertainment. I think the world could be fleshed out a bit, it is very minimalist and I get the impression that the travelling is just a way of getting to the puzzles rather than its own experience. I found the puzzles to be a little frustrating, most puzzles require quick reflexes and sharp turns, but I found that turning around sent the camera haywire and often I just couldn't see where I was going and by the time I would corrected the camera my opportunity had passed. All the puzzles have the same identity but slightly different in approach. There are test rooms which when completed will award you an extra set of wings which entitles you to run for longer periods. Collecting these wings is also crucial to progression in the game. Then there are puzzles which earn you memories of your relationship between yourself and your sister Lulu. The test rooms are more complicated than the memory puzzles and have multiple facets to them. The same principles apply though run up to a prism and it produces a protective barrier around you. If you step out of the safe zone, the barrier starts to shrink in size, and once you deplete, you die, and I return to the start of the puzzle. If you reach another prism before your protective barrier perishes, the protective barrier will be doubled in size, and so on. 
Using this protective barrier, you have to navigate the puzzles to get to the wings or the memory pieces before your barrier depletes. Sometimes you need to press buttons to get part of the puzzle to move, revealing a platform you can jump on, or activate lifts and elevators. It all has to be done quite quickly and you don't get much time to think, so generally a puzzle takes a few times or more to complete. Some of these prisms aren't active yet and you must chase and catch a hum to steal its essence and use it to activate the hub. Hums are small creatures that populate the land and are very quick and nimble. It takes a bit of luck and perseverance to catch them. The puzzles are not particularly difficult but they do require quick thinking and manoeuvring. If you're not quite sure what to do there are kiblins hanging around that can offer you hints. Some camera issues have now been rectified but spinning around can still leave you disorientated. The story is drip thread through the journey and intensifies towards the end. Memory pieces provide some background story with brief explanations of the memory. Unfortunately, there are quite a few spelling mistakes in some of these story snippets. They are told in a poetical way and are quite fragmented and don't always make sense, but they're quite imaginative and varied in their concept. I particularly enjoyed the artwork and soundtrack during these scenes. Some are quite powerful, but others just played out in front of me without much reaction. The developer has done a wonderful job of turning this title around and providing the opportunity to experience it in different ways. He has obviously listened to criticism and quickly acted to improve the game. I think the game could still be improved slightly, but at the moment it is an impressive piece of work in many respects and I'm confident that it will continue to develop and grow. Okay, that's all from our review for Tori. My next review will be for Wavetail, an action-adventure platformer where you surf the waters of a submerged city and save the islanders from mysterious sea creatures. If you're interested in that one, please click the notification bell. And if you enjoyed this video, please don't forget to like and subscribe. Thanks, and see you soon.